Hi everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be start studying assembly. To do that we're going to need this tool over here which is the assembly program and this guy over here which is the debugger. Let's get started then. This is what an assembly instruction looks like. The first part is the label which is optional and might be followed by a column. Now, in um, NASM, the column is totally optional. You don't have to put one, but uh, NASM should be able to understand that it's part of the uh, label, so it shouldn't create any error. Now, um, the label is also a target of jump and loop instructions, which are instructions that looks like this, GMP, and then you have this number over here, 0, 0, D, sorry about my horrible writings but I mean that would be this label so now when the uh, CPU reads this instruction it's gonna jump over here so a jump instruction is actually a go-to but don't worry about it because we're gonna cover this instruction with full details later on now um, this label can also be used to define variables like this way you are basically cre creating an array with four values. And now, this is the core, because this is the actual instruction. What it does is getting this number one over here and copy into registry, racks. Um, there are plenty of instructions. We try to be covering as many as possible. Um, Again, some instructions are going to need these ones, which are the operands. Uh, some other instructions don't. In this case, uh, the move is actually copy. So it's going to need a source for the copy and a destination. Finally, we have a comment, which again is optional. Directives, they are part of the assembler syntax, but they are not related to any CPU instruction set. In fact, they are specific to the assembler and disassembler that is being used. For this course, we will be using NASM. Therefore, this is also the flavor of our directives. Directives begin with a period. Usually, an SM file, which is where you will place your source code, would also contain the data section, which contains the variable which have been initialized, the BSS section, which is where you will put all the data that still require initialization, and the text section, which is where the programming logic go. Now, actually, you will be able to create a working SM file just by using the text section. However, Generally, to reach some level of efficiency and complexity that will be useful to you, generally, you will need the text section and the data section, or at least the text section and the BSS section. Let's start familiarizing with the structure. So we have the text section, which includes the program logic and the data which is initializing these two variables. Now, the order doesn't really matter, so you will be able to move the whole data section on top of the text section. The last thing to say here is that if you would try to import this program over here into a different assembler, different than the NASM, then you are probably going to get an error because different program will not be able to recognize the this section over here and this section over here. So if you are if you are planning to use a different assembler, then be prepared to modify this section over here and this section over here, and also be prepared to modify the code itself because. Uh, as we're going to see in a while, um, different assembler might require different code. And this is how you declare a constant. 
So we are in the data section. That's equal to 10. And this is equal to the length of the string. Now, at this stage, neither type nor size are specified. No memory location is assigned as it will be decided during the assembly step. And that's really important because let's think about a program which consists of two ASM files. Each one of these ASM files are going to create their own object file. Now, the linker, when is going to create an executable out of these two object files, need to make sure that these addresses are not fighting each other. Now, this is how you initialize variable. Again, we are in the section data. So we have db means one byte, two bytes, four bytes, eight bytes. Very simple, right? So we have the label and then the size and then the magnitude. Now, we are dealing with variables that are not initialized. So we are in this section BSS. Again, the structure is really simple and it's similar to the previous one. So we have the name, the type and the count. So it's slightly different here because we have the name of the variable and then we are saying that we are going to create five slots of one byte. So this array is going to consist of five slots of one byte each, while this one is going to consist of 20 slots of, as you can see, four bytes each and so on. Moving data, we've seen this instruction before. So we are copying the source into the destination. There will be like, you know, the Unix CP, oh, that's huge, sorry about that. <laughs> Unix CP and the copy instruction of DOS, right? So pay attention here though. So see, square bracket. If you use the square bracket over here, you're getting the value out of this label. Instead, if you're not using anything, you're getting the address. So it's pretty much like if you've been programming C, C++, the difference between the asterisk and the ampersand. And that's really important because you are going to see if you try to use a different assembler other than NASM, you're going to notice that this instruction is likely not to work anymore. We should be able to run our own software, right? Let's have a look at the build script. So this line is going to create the object file, while this is the linker, which is going to create the executable. So let's have a look at the first. So we have the section text, and then that's the logic of the program. And that's the section data. So in here, we are declaring the just a num and we are assigning one, two, three to just a num, right? Um, this is just saying to the program that it has to exit with no error, right? So in here, we have a mov, so we are moving 12 into the AL registry. 
and then in here we have that we are moving the value of just a num into the CL register and we are making sure that we are grabbing a byte of this because you need to make sure that there is no size mismatch and here we are moving the address of just a num into this EAX right let's see what happens when we actually run the code so to use the debugger we need to do ddd and then the name of the executable here it is i hope you can see that so first of all you want to place a breakpoint in here and then you run the application and then let's have a look at al p dollar al oh it contains 12 so that's good right so we can actually yeah i will probably kill it and then we remove this and then probably i will place it in here and then i run it again and then i do p dollar cl and then i get one two three as expected right because we are grabbing the value of just a num and we are putting it into the cl and then again probably best thing would be to kill it and then we get rid of this and we can do this run and now we do p dollar x and as you can see now the value is different because we are no longer copying the value into the register but actually we are grabbing the address conversions conversions are needed when it is necessary to switch from a size to another conversions might be either widening or narrowing signed and unsigned conversions follow different rules when a widening one is being attempted while converting the upper order bits must preserve the sign just remember what we taught during the previous class uh, how we convert a negative decimal number into negative binary number just remember the uh, leading ones narrowing conversions no special instructions needed however the programmer should make sure that the final result is also the expected one as no warning message will be generated in here you are trying to put 10 into rbx and that's fine because 10 is much smaller than rbx then you access the lower 8 bits of rbx through bl and you copy it into al and it would also work if this was like for example 300 the first line will work but this will not work because bl is an 8 bits register so it will not be able to contain 300 unsigned widening conversions the upper part of the memory register will be equal to zero as the number has only magnitude so we have no sign here so we have 10 and we put it into al and then we initialize the entire rbx to zero all zeros and now we are copying al in the lower part of the rbx leaving the remaining part of the register equal to zero also the specialized moves x can also be used
sign widening conversions. The upper order bits must be equal to either ones or zeros depending on the original value, so we are preserving the sign. As explained before, to convert minus 9 to binary, so we are starting from a 60 bits situation and we are moving to a 32 bits. So we calculate plus 9 using 16 bits and then we invert everything, add 1 and we are appending 16 1 and voila now we are having the 32 bits version of minus 9 and then we have this more instructions I would recommend that you have a look at the manual because there are so many of them that would be impossible to cover all of them And the last example for today, narrowing conversion. So we have a 10, we copy to RBX, and then we access the lower part of RBX through BL. But as a BL is big enough to contain 10, AL is going to contain the correct result. But then here, when we copy 335 to RBX, when we are going to access the RBX through BL, BL is not big enough to contain 335, right? It is just a bit. So AL is going to contain random results. Unsigned widening conversion. So we move 10 to AL. We initialize the all RBX to zero. And then we copy AL, so 10, to BL, which is the lower part of RBX, leaving all upper zeros in RBX. Finally, sign widening conversion, minus 10 into BX, and then we use the special instruction over here. Let's have a look. Okay, so as usual, we run it. Okay, so in here we need to make sure the AL is actually containing 10. So we put breakpoint in here, run, and then P dollar AL, and we have 10. So this narrowing, narrowing conversion is actually working as expected. Now we kill the process, we can remove this. And now we need to make sure that this one doesn't work. So we place a breakpoint in here, we run it, and again, P dollar AL, and we get 79, as expected, because we are copying BL to AL, but BL cannot contain 335. So again, we can kill it, we can remove breakpoint and finally we put breakpoint in here we run it and then we do p dollar pl and we have a 10 right as expected again kill remove breakpoint and then we can put a breakpoint in here and run it. And then P dollar. This time we need to say ABX. And we're getting minus 10 as expected. So I hope you've enjoyed this class. Thank you very much.